Let's have a look at the main parts of the starter motor, and then how it works. On the top, we find the solenoid. This has some electrical connections on the back, and a thick electrical wire running down into the main case, which houses the electrical motor. There's a removable plate on the rear of the main case, and we'll look inside this in just a moment. Then we find the drive end frame, which holds everything together and allows the motor to be mounted to the car. At the very front, it has a shield partially covering the pinion gear. Looking inside the device, we see the shaft runs the entire length of the starter motor. Attached to the shaft is the rotor, often called the armature. This rotates with the shaft. This has a number of channels cut into it with coils of thick enameled wire inserted into each of the channels. The ends of the wires connect to the commutator plates. These are segments of copper which are separated and insulated from each other and spaced out around the circumference of the rotor. At the end of the motor, we find some spring-loaded brushes, which push against the commutator plates. These will slide across the commutator plates, and they will allow electricity to flow through the coils of wire in the rotor. Surrounding the rotor and attached to the case are some permanent magnets. These form the stator. Some models of starter motor will use field windings, which are simply coils of wire that, when powered, will generate an electromagnetic field. These essentially do the same job, it's just that the field windings use a different, slightly more complex design, which can generally produce a more powerful magnetic field. When electricity is allowed to flow to the rotor, it flows through the brush and then through the coil to the opposite brush and then returns to the battery via the frame of the car. When the current flows through a wire, it generates an electromagnetic field. We know that magnets interact to push and pull each other. So the rotor's electromagnetic field is repulsed by the stator's magnetic field. The gaps in the commutator mean the magnetic field keeps resetting, so the rotor is never able to align. But the rotor keeps trying, so we get a constant rotation. There are usually two pairs of brushes and multiple commutator plates which are activated at the same time. This ensures a strong magnetic field and a smooth rotation. The thick electrical wire runs from the brushes and up to the solenoid. Inside the solenoid, we have an iron piston, which can move backwards and forwards. This is surrounded by a solenoid coil, which is just a coil of enameled wire. When the solenoid coil is energized, it will generate an electromagnetic field and attract the iron piston, pulling it backwards. Between the solenoid and the end of the piston, we find a return spring. This allows the piston to return to its original position when the solenoid is de-energized. The rear end of the piston has a conductive metal plate. As the piston moves back, it eventually comes into contact with the main electrical terminals mounted on the rear of the solenoid. Once it makes this connection, a very large electrical current will rush into the brushes and power the motor. When the coil is de-energized, it will cut the power to the motor also. The front end of the piston connects to a lever. When the piston moves backwards and forwards, it will cause this to pivot. The lever is connected to the drive sleeve. An overrunning clutch sits just ahead of this. The pinion gear is then attached to this at the front of the shaft. The overrunning clutch protects the electrical motor. Inside the clutch are a number of rollers, with springs which can move back and forth in a tapered notch. When the pinion starts to turn, the rollers move to the end of their chambers and wedge in between the pinion gear, locking it into place. This allows it to rotate the flywheel. After a short time, the combustion of the engine causes the flywheel to rotate faster than the pinion gear and this unlocks the rollers, allowing the pinion to rotate freely. Otherwise, the starter motor could burn out. The overrunning clutch rides along a spline on the shaft. This allows the pinion gear to slightly rotate, which locks the rollers and allows it to slide easily into the flywheel. Some starter motors also use a planetary gear between the electrical motor and the shaft. This simply increases the torque further, but we won't go into detail on that in this video. Check out these videos to continue learning about automotive engineering, and I'll catch you there for the next lesson.
Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, and theengineeringmindset.com.